obey God's law. Okay? Because they didn't understand just how pure and perfect God is, they thought that they could please him by their own good works. And we still have that to this day. You know, uh, people out there feeling that uh, if they just do enough good things, that they'll, they'll find their way into the Lord's heaven there. Okay? They stumble in unbelief over the rock, Jesus Christ, who alone can make them right before God. Again, in uh, verse 33, Paul is quoting the prophet Isaiah. The Gentiles were different from the Jews. The Gentiles did not have the written law. They were, they were living in open sin. Yes, they were more willing to listen to the gospel. You know, I find this really interesting. Just want to share this. Uh, you know, I was a church planner for like 15 years, helping plant churches and so forth. You know, it's really interesting, kind of relating to this. Many times, people that don't really know anything about church or anything about anything are more prone to come to Christ. You know, basically that's what's going on here with the Gentiles. They didn't have the law, they didn't have anything, and it says here that they were more willing to listen to the gospel. And I found myself that as a church planner, people that uh, were down and out, people that struggled with alcohol and drugs and living on the street and so forth, hard lives and out there were just doing whatever. When you'd sit down and really talk with them, uh, many of them would want to come to Christ because they were down and out. They were pretty destitute, you know, living on the streets, didn't know where they, you know, uh, we had uh, one uh, place that we rented um, uh, right in Columbia, outside of Lancaster there, and we would have a couple of these homeless people that would want to stay in our building and sleep there because they had nowhere to go. And we would try to help them, give them food and so forth and, and whatever, and uh, uh, a couple of them came to really know Christ and ended up being uh, part of our choir that we had. <laughs> singing and so forth, you know? And, and it was funny because um, our choir that we had was basically uh, people coming from the homeless uh, mission where I would go pick them up. Water Street Mission it was called. I would go pick them up and take them back. And, uh, you know, they came to the Lord. And uh, one, I still keep in contact with this day. I send him a message each week. And uh, he's uh, finally got out of the mission. He has his own apartment, he's really following the Lord, and he's doing well. You know, God's really kind of delivered this guy, you know? And uh, he was really destitute. But um, I'm just sharing that because, you know, many times these, you know, kind of relates here that, you know, uh, uh, sometimes you know, the people, people that go to church every week and all, a lot of them, they may believe that they're saved, but they're not. You know, you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And there are people, I remember living in Little Rock, Arkansas, going to work out there when I first went in. And uh, I was attending, I was part of a church out there, and and, uh, and I sat next to a fella one Sunday morning, got talking with him, and I says, um, so uh, how long have you been coming out to Markham Street Church? He says, oh, about 20, 25 years. I said, yeah. I said, so. he says, oh yeah, my mother came here, my grandparents came here, my great grandparents came here. Long story short, I got talking to him, asked him about his salvation. He wasn't saved. He wasn't saved. Here's the fellow that's going to church for 25 years attending this church. And the conversation, you know, I talked to him about, you know, being a sinner and all. He says, you know, tell me, justify. Hey, no. I've been part of this church for 25 years. My mother goes to this church. My grandparents go to this church. And I give, and I do this, and I do that. He's telling me all this stuff. You know, and I says, you got to understand. Do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? I don't know about that, but I can tell you this, this, and this, and this, and this. He was so, you know, I went on to share the gospel with him. Well, not, I, he, to my knowledge, with me there, he never, he didn't get saved at that point. But I gave it to him, you know, I gave him the message. But yet, he attended this church. 
for over 20 years. You know, but didn't know the Lord. He's probably regular too. Yeah, he yes, sir. Yeah, he was. He was ready. This is what you do. Yeah. You know. So, and he said, "Yeah." I said, "Do you believe you're?" I remember saying to him, "Do you believe you're going to heaven?" Oh, absolutely. I said, "What makes you think you're going to?" Heaven? I've been attending here for over 25 years. <laughs> he says, "Of course I'm going to. I go to church every week. I don't miss." He thought he'd go to heaven. You know, I said, I don't mean you're going to heaven. You know, and I had to watch talking to him because he looked like he was getting a little, a little, a little hostile with it there too because, you know, more or less me telling him, are you saved? Do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? He was kind of avoiding that. You know what I mean? So I walked through here. He didn't know the Lord. But yet, back for a Bible study here, this is talking about these Gentiles, these people that never... Uh, heard anything about God were more willing to listen to the gospel. You know? And it says, um, it says, through the preaching of Paul and others in the early church, many Gentiles acknowledged that they were sinners. Okay? Gentiles are what? People that were not Jewish. See, we talked about this last week. We were talking about that the, the Jewish people thought that they raided because you know, originally they were God's chosen people. And the questions come up like, well, why did God choose them? We don't really know. He just, he chose them, you know? But what happened? They rebelled. They started thinking pride got in their way. They started thinking basically who they thought they were. They were better than this one, better than that one. You know, so they fell away thinking, well, wait a minute. We can do this and we can do that because we're God's chosen people. So we can get away with it. God loves us and he chose us. So he didn't choose them, he chose us. We're special. You know what I mean? So because of this, their pride got in the way. And, you know, and of course, we know that God knew this. This is for being, for, for, you know, for being but God knew that this was going to happen. So that you and I could have the gospel. Praise God, thank you, Jesus, that we're able to have the gospel because of uh, their. Because of their rebellion, you and I have the gospel to this day. But God knew they would do that. You know, he had a, he had a plan. But um, it says, so they agreed with God that the Lord Jesus Christ was Savior of sinners and God forgave them. God turned from using rebellious Israel, Israel and began to use the Gentiles to do his work. Okay? Paul continued to, to lament the Israelites rejected Rejection of the Messiah. Okay, now let's go into Romans 10, reading 1 through 4. Okay. Romans chapter 10, 1 through 4. Okay. This is about Israel. They need the gospel. Does anybody want to read that? Dear brothers and sisters, the longing of my heart and my prayer to God is for the people of Israel to be saved. I know what enthusiasm they have for God, but is misdirected by zeal. For they don't understand God's way of making people right with himself. Refusing to accept God's way, they cling to their own way in getting right with God by trying to keep the law. Thank you. Do you want me to read four too? Yeah, four. For Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all who believed in him are made right with God. So there you go. So what went wrong with the Israelites? What did they? What were they trying to do? Live under the law. Live under the law. You know what I mean? They were trying to keep the law. And see, right there, they lost. Because you cannot keep the law. We, You and I can keep the law one way, through the power of the Holy Spirit. In other words, working in us. Okay? Within ourselves, we can't. This is why we know that the, uh, the Jewish people ended up coming up with 600 some laws because they couldn't keep them, so they kept adding, adding, adding. So they, they refused to acknowledge what Paul was talking about. They were seeking to establish their own righteousness, having not, having, uh, not submitted to the righteousness of God, not wanting to do it God's way, saying, we're going to do it, this is the way we're going to do it. They're, therefore, making themselves even higher than God, so to speak. You know, so they were really on the beat, wrong path there. 
Okay. Um, somebody read Acts chapter 7, verse 58. Go in your Bible to Acts. Back up. Chapter 7. Verse 58. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him, and the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. Okay. <clears throat> Being stoned for giving the gospel. Okay. Prime Paul was a prime example of Saul, the persecutor Christian, persecuting of Christians. Okay. <laughs> In their zeal to keep the law of the Jewish, overlooked the fact that they themselves were guilty sinners. They would not acknowledge that. All right. Somebody read Philippians three four four to six. These are just cross references to what we're studying here. Philippians four three. Sorry, Philippians three four to six. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Right. So in other words, Paul saying, if there's anybody <coughs> that should uh, get to heaven by the works, it should be me. <laughs> That's basically what he's, what he's saying. Look, I did more than all of this. You know, which is, of course, you know, ludicrous there. But he's saying, you know, that uh, uh, you know, if there's anybody that should get there by the works, it should be myself. Okay. And let's read uh, Galatians chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. Galatians chapter 2. Fifteen and sixteen. We who are as Jews by birth and not sinful Gentiles know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus, that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not in the works of the law. Because by the works of the law, no one would be justified. Right. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> by the works of the law, no one can be justified because no one can keep the law. No one can not sin. Okay? And the only way you cannot sin is through the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, that means you, you know the gospel and you've gotten saved. <laughs> because Christ lives in you, and therefore that's what causes the Spirit to come into you. Okay? Within yourself, you know, just like we're kind of read. You, uh, you can't keep the law because no one can keep the law. And if you say you're keeping the law, you're breaking the law right there because you're lying. <laughs> okay? Right there. Okay? So no one can keep the, uh, the law, which, you know, uh, what, why do we, why did God make the law? To make us aware of sin. Right. To prove that we could to prove our sin. Very good, Lord. To prove our sin. That's why it was given. It was given to tell us, like, hey, look, we're, there's not many good work in us. We cannot keep the law. You know, we cannot not sin. You know, it's only through the blood of Jesus Christ and Him leaving the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit coming to live inside of a person. That's what makes them what? Born again. Okay. But when you read the law, you have to read it with the openness of your mind and your heart because you think yourself full of feel, I'm doing everything the law requires. Right. We make ourselves feel justified. Right. Just by our own thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, when we really like, you know, uh, you know, uh, as the scripture says in one of the commandments, we should not covet. Mm -hmm. You know, we should not want. You know, uh, who in life hasn't wanted at one point something that someone else had? Or, boy, I wish I had that. You know what I mean? Or, you know, I, I could, you know. Well, I don't have something like that. You know, 
We're not even realizing, you know. We want what somebody else has, so to speak. So that's that sin right there, you know. So, uh, you know, all of it. And again, like Jesus says, he even said, if you already, if it's, you know, uh, in your heart, it's sin already. You know what I mean? Without even uh, physically doing it, if it's in your heart, you're in sin already. You know, so no one can, no one is pure within themselves. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's impossible. You know, that's basically what all this is. We may about. not use those words, I wish I had what they have. But an old time saying we used to, I have, I've heard many, many times, I wish I had a page out of their book. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah. Or, or here you go, here's one. And look what they have. They don't even, they're not even struggling. And not, they're not going through the hardships that I'm going through. So, you know, we're almost coming to the fact that uh, uh, somebody else is having an easier life than what you have. So many ways, you, you know what I mean? You know, so many things that, you know, well, look at them, look at them, you know, there's so many ways you can put that in perspective, which is, you know, the Bible says that we are to be content in any and all situations, be content with what we have. And if we're not, we're in sin because we're not content with God's given us. So it's so easy to, to realize, our, and we're all there at some point. We're all so there. get in that trap. Yeah, yeah, we're all there at some point in our lives. We, we all fall short. <laughs> Romans 2 23. We all fall short of the glory of God. You know, all of us. You know, and again, if, think about this, the easy understanding is if it was possible that we could be perfect or whatever, then what was the whole point of Jesus coming here and going to the cross? That would be a whole useless waste of time. You know, so. And this is something that Paul kept on trying to drive home to these Jewish people and so forth, and they just weren't getting it. Why? What's the same scripture? Pride leads to destruction. Yeah, they were prideful. They were just prideful people. Okay. Um, let me move on here. It says, if the Jews had trusted in God's deliverance from their sins, and not their own self-righteous efforts, they would have been saved. Had they understood the message of the prophets, they, uh, yeah, they would have been saved. They would have recognized their deliverer. Next, Paul quotes from Deuteronomy. Okay, uh, turn to the book of Deuteronomy 30, 12 to 14. Old Testament book. I have the numbers there. Deuteronomy uh, 30, 12 to 14. Somebody has it. Is not kept in heaven so to stand that you must ask who will go up to heaven and bring it down so we can hear it and obey it is not kept beyond the sea so far away that you must ask who will cross the sea to bring it to us so we can hear it and obey know the message is very close to hand it is on the lips and in your heart so that you can obey it how about you tell me uh, what did I say? 14? Okay, that was it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's the choice to, to obey and understand. For this commandment which I have commanded you today is not just mysterious for you, nor is it so far off. Okay, that was back in Deuteronomy there. All right. Let's uh, move on to Romans chapter 10. Go back to the book of Romans. We're going to read 8 to 13. Eight to thirteen. 
But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. How far? Uh, 13. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all, and richly blesses all who call on him. For if everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Now you can't get any plainer than that. I mean, I just, right after whoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus. And I like too what that says, there's no difference between Jew and Gentile. You know? There is no difference. Again, uh, God created, when we became born again, he created a new person, the Christian. Okay? It's no longer Jew or Gentile or or again, you know, it's interesting too, uh, uh, nationality in our world, you know, who's Italian, who's uh, German, or who's this, or who's that, you know, as you're saved, you're one in Christ Jesus, you're brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, God, it's no longer this nationality, or that. I mean, that's your culture, what you were born out of, so to speak, but it's no longer about that, really, it's about, you know, your brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, you see what I mean? And uh, that's what he's saying here. There's no difference between Jew and Gentile. You know, all are one in Christ Jesus. And, you know, this is something hard for the Jewish people to understand. Well, you know, the uh, uh, Jew, Jewish people, until they come to the Lord, they, they don't even believe in the New Covenant, the New Testament. They're just reading out of the uh, Old Testament. Yeah. You know, because uh, a lot of them that don't know the Lord, of course, they're still waiting for the, the Messiah, so to speak. So they don't, they don't, like what we're reading here, they don't believe it, so to speak. They're still searching and looking. Well, it would be hard because all they ever heard that they were the chosen people. You know, and then we have the, the Bible to depend on to tell us the truth, mm -hmm. but they didn't. Yeah. Like they were just Interesting. going by what they hear. Yeah. And if somebody tells you you're not going to heaven because... They can't really depend on the word of somebody else instead mm -hmm. of yeah. That, right. It was, that's how it was originally passed down, word of mouth. Yeah. And eventually the scrolls got written, but I was just thinking and usually a story this long ends up this long. Yeah. <laughs> it goes around. And then in the scrolls, when the scrolls were developed, it was only the high priest the leaders that would read from these. You see what I mean? So uh, you know, and again it just it went around by word of mouth, so to speak. But um, you know, uh, it's just interesting how it all is uh, put together here. Okay, it says, God was not looking for law keepers. No one is able to keep the law, what we've been talking about here tonight. Instead, he has asked for simple agreement that Jesus indeed is the Lord. God has shown us that Jesus was Lord by raising him from the dead. And this salvation was not for Jews alone. It is wide open the Jew, the Gentile, to all who come to him by faith in Jesus Christ. And how is the gospel spread? Okay. Um, let's look at um, Galatians chapter 3, 26 to 28. <clears throat> Book of Galatians. 26 to 28. Chapter. So in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor there male and female, for you all are one in Christ Jesus. Uh, that's good. Thank you, Ken. Hear that? That's he was saying not even male or female, all one in Christ Jesus. You know what I mean? We're, we're one unit in Christ Jesus. That's pretty awesome. Okay. Uh, let's go back into Romans 10. Romans 10, 14 and 15. How 
how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. These verses may be referring to the Israelites, but they also apply to everyone everywhere. This is the way the gospel spread all over the world. The Lord sends his servants to preach the gospel. In other words, how will they hear? This is where you get missionaries. You know, you get uh, people that, um, you know, uh, go on different countries and so forth. But, you know, like I always share, all of us, in a sense, are missionaries. If you're saved, you're a missionary, okay? What's a missionary? Spread the gospel. Right. Someone who, like Martin said, okay? Now, if you're saved, you are to what? Spread the gospel. That's your calling. You know, our calling is to spread the gospel, to give the good news, to share. So, you know, uh, a lot of Christians many times get that confused. They figure, well, I'm not in, quote, we would say, full-time ministry, you know, or I may, like, uh, use myself, for example, uh, uh, quote, a uh, working missionary for 15 years as a church planner, okay? Uh, I basically did that as a call from God, as a church planner. I was on a mission for God, to, to plant churches and so forth. But that was my, my occupation was a missionary. But we're all called to be missionaries. We're all called to go and share our faith. Just like Martha just said, what's a missionary? Someone who shares his faith. They're on a mission, okay? In other words, put it this way. What's the point of learning and understanding God's word to keep it to yourself? Right? That's not what we're to do. We're not supposed to learn and, and, and get the knowledge <coughs> and wisdom to keep it to ourselves. Now, one of the first ways that you share your faith is that in the world, people see something different than you than the average Joe, you know, the average working class person. They see something different in you. So that can cause somebody to ask questions, or why you do this, or you don't do that. You know, why are you involved in some different things of this nature and so forth. Uh, but today, you have many Christians that are, you know, afraid to share their faith. I used to teach a course in Arkansas called uh, uh, Sharing Your Faith Without Fear. You know, because uh, one of the biggest reasons people don't share their faith is they're they're afraid. They're afraid that uh, they're going to get stumped, or they're not. So you're not going to know enough. But it's like this: the easiest way to share your faith is to share your testimony of things that God's doing in your own personal life. You know that you know they, a person can't deny what God is doing in your own personal life. They can't deny that. You know, and uh, but we're all called to um, on the mission field, some way or another, to be sharing our faith. So the Lord sends his servants to preach the gospel. The gospel is preached to those who have not yet heard. When people hear the message and believe, many times they become saved. Okay? Um, I know when I was living out in Maine, I used to go to uh, do prison ministry. And, and uh, I used to go out to this jail, a jail called Pennebeck County Jail. And there were so many inmates that never heard of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. They never heard that before. And it was like just mind blowing that they never even heard it. You know, and uh, I was able to share with them, of course. And uh, but and I was going to come back home and share with Angela. I said, you know, so I went to jail there. And these guys, they never even heard of Jesus as Savior or anything like I'm talking about. 
Now you end up taking them back to the book of Genesis, which is Adam and Eve and the fall and everything. Like, you know, and these are uh, uh, grown men, 30s and 40s, inmates there, of course, different things. But just shocked me that in our country, there are still people that never heard of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's like bizarre, isn't it? You know, you wouldn't think that, but um, there are, you know, still people out there so lost. Many years ago, I was at the medical center when they first opened up, and the waiting room was full. And someone said something about angels. And one little boy looked at his mother and said, are there really angels? Yeah. That's how she knew. Yeah. Like, we don't talk about that stuff. No. And see, right there, Doris, that's an open door. That's an open door. You know what I mean? It's, it's things like that. Are there really angels? Yeah, there is, you know. You know, and then, like I'm saying, you know, but it sounded like the mother, of course, kind of went into a little panic, like, oh, you can't be talking about that, you can't be talking about that. That's, you know, that, that's it, you know. It's sad when you yeah. think about it. It really is. That's why, you know, we need a lot of prayer for for all over the world, our country and all, because uh, the gospel still needs to get out there. I'm telling you, there's so many people that still don't know the truth and are, are lost, and, and you got to got to be out there doing it. Okay, let's uh, let's go to 10, 16 to 21 here. Okay, uh, chapter 10, verses 16 to 21. Anybody? But not everyone welcomes the good news. For Isaiah the prophet says, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about God. I'm sorry, that's it about Christ. I think that's right. right. <laughs> but I ask, have the people of Israel actually heard the message? Yes, they have. The message has gone through the earth in the words to all the world. How far did you tell me? Uh, uh, 21. But I asked, did the people of Israel really understand? Yes, they did. For every time of Moses, God said, I will rouse your jealousy through people who are not even a nation. I will provoke your anger through the foolish Gentiles. And later, Isaiah spoke boldly for God, saying, I was found by people who were not looking for me. I showed myself to those who were not asking for me. But regardless, it, but regarding Israel, God said, all day long I opened my arms to them, but they were disobedient and rebellious. Mm. That's it. Thank you. God truly offered salvation to Israel first. Jesus walked among his people and taught them in their synagogues, in their temple, in their villages, in their homes. In other words, Jesus, he flew right into the temple. You know, he went to the synagogues there. He went into their homes, you know, and he, he, he preached this to them. But most of the Israelites refused to believe him, you know? And, you know, and I was just reading in my Bible today in, in the book of John, you know, uh, Jesus was telling the Jewish people, unless you believe, he says this three times, you will die in your sins. You will die in your sins. And they're still refusing to believe, you know? <clears throat> so, I, oh, sorry, was somebody saying something? I, like, it sounds like God does have a, you know, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> you know, move on. And, yeah, exactly. That's right. Like, he got to a point where it's like, enough's enough. Mm -hmm. You're going to reject me. I'm <laughs> going to the Gentiles. You know, they never heard anything. And now, look, the Gentiles, according to Scripture, are excited and wanting to learn and end up getting saved. You know? And praise God. That's why me and you, uh, uh, we have the gospel today. We praise God. And uh, like Vicki said, which is true, the Lord said, enough's enough. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, uh, a lot of times it's, it's funny because never take, that's a good thing you said there, never take the Lord for granted, you know? He loves us and, and, and has all grace, but there's only so much grace. There comes a point when he says, done. 
You know, the person's just rebellious, 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 rebellious. You know, and, um, you know, he'll just take that person, put him on his shelf, so to speak. Not because he wants to, because he knows their heart is hardened, and they will, they refuse. And, you know, so what's their, what's, what's the point of their life, really? Basically, to the Lord, they become useless. It's the truth of it is, you know, really, and that's it. And that's well, he basically. says that he'll have to bring punishment upon the world itself, and even the very elect can be persuaded to turn yeah. against him. Yeah, oh, absolutely. A dangerous time. Yeah, yeah, you know, you see that, you know? And, um, but there's only so much that the Lord will take, and then he says, you know, you know that's it. That's Pastor, when I said the word elect, I didn't mean Jewish people. I meant Christians. Yeah, yeah, Christian people. Right. You know, like they, they uh, uh, fall away. Okay, it says here, uh, Instead of continuing to seek the Lord by relying on their own supposed good works, therefore God turned to the Gentiles and had not even sought, excuse me, therefore God turned to the Gentiles who had not even sought him. Okay? In other words, what I'm understanding here, that God just turned to the Gentiles. They weren't seeking him. God, you know, which makes sense, because the Bible tells us in John that no man seeks after God. You know what I mean? So we must understand that. In other words, uh, you sit here and you're saved today, God seeked you out and saved and drew you. You didn't come to him. He came to you. Well, they didn't even know he existed. No. They were ignorant of anything about the Lord. Yeah, yeah. You know, so then God opened their eyes. God drew, drew them to himself. Yeah. Okay? It says, God plans to restore Israel. Paul asks God, excuse me, Paul asks of God's rejection of the nation of Israel means that God is no longer interested in the Jews being saved. Okay? Let's go on to, uh, we got a little bit more time, chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. I say then, has God cast away his people? Certainly not. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not cast away his people whom he foreknew. <clears throat> or do you not know what the scripture saith of Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars, and I alone am left, and they seek my life. But what does the divine response say to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Okay. So not all of them have rejected. Not all of them rejected. A lot of them did, but not all of them. Paul asks if God's rejection of the nation of Israel means that God is no longer interested in the Jews being saved. Now we know it here. He reminds the Jews that even when the majority of their nation turned away from God, there were always a few who believed his word and trusted in him. So in other words, you know, some believed, not all of them turned completely away. And that's just like in our world today. There are, there are Jewish Christians. You know, um, I listen to uh, TBN, Trinity, you know, and there's a uh, Christian Jewish rabbi on there, and I love listening to him. He's very knowledgeable with the word. And, uh, you know, he's a Jewish rabbi. He, he loves the Lord, talks about Christ all the time. You know, so, you know, many, many Jews are coming to the Lord, but there's still a lot of lost ones, too. A lot of lost ones out there. You know, so, it says, although the majority of Israelites have refused to believe that Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth was the deliverer, there are still quite a number of Jews who did not, and Paul was one of them. Okay? So Paul was one that believed. Okay, we see Paul, God used Paul to write 13 books of scripture here. Okay, before we uh, finish up, let's read uh, Romans 11, 5, and 6. So too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. 
And if by grace, and it cannot be based on work. If right. it were, grace would no longer be grace. Okay, that, did you do six? Yeah. Okay. In other words, that's right. Think about it. It's good. <coughs> Works and grace. Okay. What's grace? God's mercy. God's undeserving you know, kindness to us. Kindness that we, we don't deserve. It's kindness that we don't deserve. So you can't have grace and works. So you have one or the other. It's not works. It's God's grace. God's kindness to undeserving sinners. Something we don't deserve. So it's by His grace, goes back to vision, through our faith. You know, through our faith, through grace. It's not by works. So he's trying to bring that home here. Okay? Again, Paul emphasizes that this salvation is by grace, God's unmerited kindness towards sinners. Who can be saved? Who can be saved? Only those who come by faith in response to God's gracious gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. It says, but what about the nation of Israel? Will it ever be restored to its previous position of favor and privilege of usefulness in the work of God here on earth? Okay, and let somebody read Acts 4.12. Acts 4.12. We'll close with this verse here. <clears throat> Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Right, there you go. That's right. And then again, it has Ephesians. Ephesians is, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast here. Okay? And basically, we'll end up at 11.11. Uh, 11, that uh, uh, God's purpose is that Israelites will see what the Gentile Christians have in Christ and eventually be envious to the point that they to desire salvation. In other words, we're going to end up, we're going to stop there next week. We'll pick it up with a Romans 11.11. 11. Okay? But it's interesting because the key is that God's will is that the Gentile, that the Jewish people will see what the Gentiles have through Christ and want it. And want it. So we're going to see that their way is not the way. Okay, we'll close in prayer with that. Pick it up next week. Dear Lord, we praise and we thank you, Father, for this Bible study. Father God, I just praise and thank you, Lord God, for